this, let's bring in Nuclear for Australia founder, the great William Shackle, who we've spoken about uh, to a number of times. Thanks for joining us again, William. What do you make of the recent rhetoric of the Prime Minister? Well, it's just simply not true. In terms of the Prime Minister's comments, not only is the fact that Australia does have a nuclear industry, we've got a re research reactor 30 kilometres from the Sydney CBD, which was built in nine years. And in addition to that, he's just flat out wrong when it comes to Australia not having advantage in nuclear. We have the largest uranium reserves in the world. What I would say more generally is it's been, I've been really concerned from this nuclear fear campaign that the Prime Minister has backed. There have been pictures floating around of AI generated pictures of uh, fishermen pulling out three eyed fish from uh, next to a nuclear reactor. There have been images and advertisements that the Labor Party's been running uh, where they've got big nuclear reactors behind the Sydney Opera House and on the shores of Bondi Beach. And all this does is instill fear in the community and it's not based on facts. The Prime Minister needs to listen to the science and listen to the majority of Australians and start thinking about lifting the ban on nuclear power. I've rarely seen senior politicians, I mean, they can disagree on policy and they might have an argument about it, but this is so important to keep the lights on in Australia that young people like you, old blokes like me, would like to see both sides get together and say, OK, yes, we're going to need some solar and yes, we're going to need some, some wind power. Uh, we might have to keep some coal going for a while and gas is important. Let's put nuclear into the mix and then we've got the advantage that not the rest of the world does have. We'll have nuclear energy, gas power, and we've got plenty of wind and sun. We can have the whole lot. Why, why would you shut your eyes to this? 100%. We need to have all options on the table. And currently, because of a 90s era ban that our politicians are still defending, we're not able to have that. When you look around the world, 32 countries have the option of nuclear power, and a further 50 are considering it on top of that. You even look at the US, where the Democrat uh, energy secretary there just opened a new nuclear power plant at Vogel, and she said that the US is planning to build 200 new nuclear power plants. So what is it in Australia where we can't even have a conversation about nuclear power, we can't even consider lifting the prohibition on nuclear power, which is unprecedented. We're the only member of the G20 with a ban on nuclear power. So if we're serious about addressing climate change, if we're serious about improving energy security, and if we're serious about lowering energy bills, it only makes sense to have the option of nuclear power in our mix. Will so many of the media let him get away with saying things like, oh, well, small modular reactors, they don't work. Well, it's, that's simply not true. China and Russia both have small modular reactors. And they're also, you could technically consider the fact that in, the, in nuclear submarines, which operate around the world, uh, they are also classified as small reactors. I think what's really concerning is, you know, I went to school today, Steve, and if I lied in an assignment or didn't reference a statistic, I would be suspended. But our politicians aren't held to the same standards. They are allowed to lie and they have a platform to lie and spread misinformation about nuclear power, which they know is wrong, which they know has not been done in consultation with the nuclear experts. And I think it has a grave precedent for this country. Not only does it restrict us from accessing nuclear power, but it undermines trust in Australia's nuclear power, nuclear science capabilities with uh, ANSTO and our nuclear medicine capability. But also I think it undermines trust uh, potentially in the AUKUS submarine announcement. And to think about what our partners, the UK and US, must be thinking, seeing that, you know, politicians are literally sharing images from The Simpsons uh, when communicating around nuclear science, I think it's gravely concerning. Just finally, how's the petition going, Will? It's going really well. We're close to 40,000 signatures on our petition, so I'd encourage your viewers uh, to sign it at nuclearforaustralia.com if they want to help us lift the bans on nuclear power.